let's create a Lightroom preset for the Ilford Ortho Plus. Now, before we jump into the program and start color grading and creating a preset, first of all, let's talk about the general aspects of this film stock. Now, the main characteristic of the Ilford Ortho Plus is that it has a very dramatic contrast. Whites are very raised and very bright, and then the blacks are very deep and punchy looking. So, in essence, what we're doing is just stretching our exposure to the extremes, creating a very contrasty image. Apart from that, the grain is barely noticeable, but it is there, very fine, very small. Now, one key aspect of this film stock is that it has high sensitivity for the greens and the blues. What I mean by this is that this film stock will capture a lot more light coming from those wavelengths. Therefore, greens in the forest, in the grass, blues in the sky are going to be a lot brighter. So it's great for landscape photography. Now, opposite to that, it's not great for portraiture because the reds and the oranges have low sensitivity so they're going to be a lot darker so it's not great for skin tones so having said that let's jump into lightroom and start color grading so creators once in lightroom i have this image in the develop module and as you can see i'm in lightroom classic but don't worry if you're editing on your phone or in your desktop version of lightroom it's exactly the same process exactly the same tools just the interface is a bit different now, first of all, we need to transform this image into black and white. And the way that I like to use it is using the profiles of Adobe over here. Right here, as you can see, we're in Adobe Color. Now I'm going to move down to Adobe Monochrome. And you can see immediately that our image is changed into black and white. And tools like Vibrance and Saturation are nullified. And in HSL, instead of having the hue and saturation sliders, right here we only have the luminance. Okay, so let's create that dramatic contrast. For that, we're going to use several tools. First of all, we're going to use the basic corrections over here highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, then the tone curve and also the presence tab. Now, as you can see, I did not mention the exposure contrast tools over here. Now, these two sliders, I like to leave them at zero, not include them in the preset because maybe if my image was shot a bit underexposed on field or a bit overexposed, I can use these sliders to compensate. So right here, as you can see this image, I added a 0.3 in the exposure because for my taste, it was a bit underexposed but I do not want this 0.3 stops to be added into the preset and applied into all photos that maybe are taken in a correct manner. So these two, I like to exclude them from the preset just as well as white balance and tint, which are not applicable for this tutorial because we're adding white photography. Okay, so first of all, we want to bring up a bit more information in the shadows around the 20s is going to be enough plus 21. Now I am adding a bit more information in the shadows because Although it is a very contrasty style, it is still film photography that has loads of information and loads of latitude of exposure. Then the white, I'm just going to bring them up. Remember, well, we want brighter highlights, brighter whites on the plus 26, just creating a bit more contrast. And then opposite to that, the blacks, I'm just going to drag it down to create that punchy look or those deep blacks in our image around the minus 16. Okay, so immediately straight out from the box, you can notice how the image is a bit more dramatic, a bit more punchy in terms of contrast, but not quite finished. Let's move down to the tone curve. Now the tone curve is a very powerful tool that allows us to control the exposure and contrast on our image, but also we can even add some colors. So for example, we're editing black and white photography, but we can still add some tints into our image with the RGB channels. Now in this case, we're not gonna use that, just gonna move to the point tone curve over here. And it's a very simple edit. What we want to do is just make our exposure a bit more punchy and contrasty. For that, what we need to do is just add more difference between the dark parts of the image and the bright parts of the image. And the easiest way to do that is just alter or tilt our tone curve into a specific direction. So as you can see, if I go towards the positives or towards the left with our whites over here, we can add more white, more brightness into our image. Now, obviously this is way too much. I'm just gonna drag it just a bit and the value is gonna be 244 in the input, which is the X axis, and then 255, which is the vertical axis of this coordinate and then this point over here controls the blacks we don't want to go up otherwise we introduce more brightness into the dark parts of the image instead we want to go towards the right and notice how we go towards the right we're changing our exposure to be a bit more contrasty and punchy now obviously again this is way too much it's going to be very slight very subtle around the 10 percent but immediately you can notice the difference we just shifted our exposure to be a bit more harsh in terms of contrast can deactivate the tone curve this is before and after and it's very punchy and dramatic with y on our keyboard you can see what we're doing and we're getting there with the exposure and contrast next we're going to move up to the presence tab now just as a disclaimer the presence tab 
in this case for this preset is going to be completely optional up to you guys but i am going to use it now the presence tab we have texture clarity and dehaze which will affect how sharp and how contrasty our image looks in particular this image is shot in a digital sensor of 33 megapixel sensor at 2.8 aperture and one over 2000 of a second so it's tad sharp as you can see it's very sharp and in the olden days we could not achieve such a sharp image the lenses back in the day were a bit softer a bit less contrasty and they didn't have all the coatings that lenses have today to create such a sharp and contrasty image so what i like to do in the presence tab is just uh, handicap a bit my image so it looks a bit older so what i can do right here is just texture for example go towards the positives we add more texture more clarity i'm going to go towards the negatives just to make it a bit softer just a bit and then clarity well it adds contrast into details into midtones so i don't want to go towards the positives I want to go again towards the negatives around the minus, minus 24, same values. And then the haze, what it will add towards the negatives is a similar effect to the halation effect. Not exactly the similar, but quite similar. The highlights are going to start to glow if I go towards the negatives, as you can see. Around the minus 18, just to make our image a bit more washed out. So you guys can go with these values, but as you can see, they altered a bit of the exposure and contrast on our image. In particular, the haze, if you deactivate the haze, it highly affects our contrast. So you guys can go with the value that you want over here or not include them at all. Next up, grain. Now the grain was very subtle, very small, but it was there. So what I'm gonna do is just add some quantity over here, maybe around the 20s, it's just gonna be enough. So it's not too distracting or not too big and just add a bit of size. Around the 41 is gonna be enough. And if we zoom out, we can basically neglect it. We don't see it at a first glance, but if we zoom in and pay attention, it's there, quite small, but it is there. Now, finally, let's add that sensitivity for landscapes and that lack of sensitivity for portraits. So we're going to move up to black and white, which is, well, the remnants of the HSL. And first of all, the reds and the oranges. We want to bring them towards the negative. So just reducing a bit of the sensitivity of these colors. Oranges are under minus 29 and they're under minus 25 or the same values for the reds. Immediately, you can notice how it affects the reds in the tree over here. Notice how if I deactivate black and white, this is before and after we're making them a bit more dark because this film stock isn't too sensitive to these colors. So we're basically darkening all the colors that are contained a bit of red or a bit of orange, as you can see. That includes also the pants, which are brown. And then we're going to add more sensitivity for the greens and for the blues. So up to the values around the plus 35, just going to do the same for the aquas that will control a bit of the blues and also for the blues as well. And as you can see in our original image, we have some blues in the background in the shade and some greens. If I deactivate black and white, it, they're basically very dark. And now they're a lot brighter, a bit more sensitive to those colors. So this will make this preset perfect for landscape photography, but not great for portraits. So let's save the preset and see briefly how it performs in other images and see if we need to modify it. So I'm going to go to presets, hit the plus sign, create a preset. I'm going to name it and just a reminder we don't want to mark any of the things that we didn't use for example detail calibration high dynamic range color grading we didn't use them just as white balance exposure and contrast how about in this image already a very contrasty image in the zetas of sevilla let's apply first of all over here the ortho plus and it's very dramatic notice how the sky is completely lit up because of the sensitivity to the blues and then we have a very nice contrast very punchy looking and dramatic image then the SFX 200, which is quite similar, but as you can see, we have deeper and darker blacks with a very nice and big film grain, but the highlights are a bit well preserved compared to the Ortho Plus. And then finally, we have the HP5, which is very flat. We have loads more detail in dark parts of the image and highlights, but we are losing some of the contrast or natural contrast of the image. How about in this image of these old guys playing some chess in New York? Let's apply the Ortho Plus and just pay attention to the blue in the jacket and the red in the sweater over here. So let's apply that. And yeah, we can see how the blues became brighter and the reds became darker. And that's because of the sensitivity to certain colors that we added in black and white, very similar to the film. Now, in the other hand, we have over here the SFX 200 from Ilford as well, which is similar in the sense that we have a nice looking contrast. But right here we have highlights that are a bit more well preserved. Pay attention to the white chest pieces over here. This is in the SFX 200. And in the Ortho Plus, they're a bit brighter, a bit well less preserved, a bit more dramatic. Now, on the other hand, we have over here the HP5, which is completely different. It's a very flat exposure over here with low contrast, but loads more information. So 
three different styles from the Ilford and I think we nailed them all. So there you have it, my interpretation of the Ilford Ortho Plus applied into digital photography. I hope you achieved some knowledge out of this video. I remember that the preset that we just created, I've already added it into the Edag preset pack V3 and the analog preset pack. Link up here to both of them in case you want to check that out. Up there, you can find also my personal presets and personal LUTs that I use every single day to make my editing process a lot easier and a lot faster. So if you find something that you like, it's a great way you can support me so I can continue to do videos for you guys. If you like the short clip and you're interested in watching the full tutorial, check the video that's appearing on screen right here. And if you want to edit in a faster manner, whether it be photo or video, you can check out my preset and LUT shop right here. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.